What's up, good people? Welcome back to another episode of Undrafted Views. We're here. We talk sports from the sidelines. And today we're going to talk about how Chris Middleton and Devin Booker's injuries may impact their team's success in the playoffs. Let's get into it. The Milwaukee Bucks are currently without their number two option in Chris Middleton with the MCL strain. Do you see it impacting the Bucks versus the Bulls as they move forward in this series? No, I don't. Now, I know it may have disrupted the Bucks um, in the game where the Bulls won. I can understand that because it happened during the game. And that's fine. His injury occurred during that game. But I think that the Bucks can bounce back. I do think that for this particular series, Chris Middleton, is he is he needed? Should he always play? Yes, of course. I mean, he is part of – he is the core, one of the core pieces of the Milwaukee Bucks' success, especially in their 2021 championship run. So, yes, yes. Chris Middleton is needed on, on the roster. He is needed in the game, and he should always play. But mm-hmm. since he's not there and he's not injured, and if I think about the matchup with the Bulls and the Milwaukee Bucks – I think that he will be okay sitting out for the rest of the series. I will be okay with that. Now, will it go, you, you know, the, technically the Bulls should probably be, at, probably be at home. But if they're not, you know, if it goes full full seven because Chris Milton is out, I'm really okay with that. It's still Bucks. But I, I, I do believe that this series, it will not majorly impact, I think, the success of the Milwaukee Bucks moving to the conference semifinals. But he'll be needed in that particular matchup for sure. Oh, absolutely. If the Bucks were playing any other team right now, it would be a problem. A, a huge problem. So let's mm-hmm. talk about maybe who could step up and be the second option with Middleton out. You know, as I look at the uh the Bucks and how they're made, I think Bobby Portis is gonna be their X Factor oh. to step up and be the second option because he played okay a that. tremendous role for them when they yes, won the championship did. last season. I'm okay with that. Yeah, and oh, and the Bucks fan base love Bobby <laughs> Portis. Yes, yeah. I'm I'm actually okay with that. I think he has earned his opportunity to be the second option, or would he be the third? Because Drew would step up to be the second. I don't know, <laughs> but he hasn't. He has a way to step in and at least absorb some of the point production that Chris Middleton is guaranteed to give you. One of the things, though, that's going to be really missed um, is going to be Chris Middleton's defense. Just let's let's just be honest. The Bucs need his defensive um, ability on the floor in order for them to be successful. Maybe not in this series with the Bulls, but in any future series. And so I don't know how long he's going to be out. I think they said, but it's it's not a tear, it's a strain. So maybe Mm -hmm. he'll be back. And hopefully he won't have to play the first two games in the next series just to give him enough recovery time because he's going to be needed whoever they're up against in the conference semifinals. But hopefully Bobby Portis will be able to absorb some of the point production um, I just don't know. Long term, though, I still think Middleton needs to be on the on the court. So. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The Bucks are the way. Like I said, the way that they're structured, Grayson Allen can step in at yep. any given moment, yeah. which he has. You mm-hmm. know, Wesley Matthews, and then you know Drew Holiday. I feel like you know he's a true point guard, yeah. and he's he's you know he can step in. He can get you that defense <laughs> yeah. for sure. No, yeah. We, yeah, yeah. But when we're talking about playing up against teams like Boston. If that's who they play in the conference semifinals, this mm-hmm. this is the deal. When will Chris Milton need to return? Depending on what the matchup looks like in the conference semifinals. So if it's this iteration of the Brooklyn Nets, he could probably sit out for the entire season, for the entire uh, series <laughs> against the Nets. Uh, if it's this, what we're the product that the Nets are putting out right now. That's all I have to go by, right? Now something may change, of course. Again. We do need Chris Milton on the floor. I'm going to be clear about that. However, if he needed a couple of more games of recovery time and they maybe wanted to bring him back game three of the conference semifinals, especially if it's against the uh, Brooklyn Nets, I would be okay with that. However, if it's against the Boston Celtics, <laughs> then that's going to be a different story. Yeah, he, he needs to be there game one. <laughs> that's my point. So his his return or his the urgency of Chris Middleton's return will be contingent on who they play, the Bucks play in the conference semifinals. Yes, so rest up, Middleton, because you will be needed just how soon. <laughs> right, right. Okay. So another injury I think that we need to discuss is Devin Booker with the Phoenix Suns. Now, hamstring injury is one of those lingering injuries. You can ask James Harden about that. <laughs> well, how will the Suns do without Devin uh, moving forward, especially in this series against the New Orleans Pelicans? I think it's going to be okay. 
Um, they will have to work hard. And I think they would have had to work hard against the Pelicans, even if Devin Booker was on the court. I feel the same way about the Suns when Devin Booker needs to return, like I did with Chris Middleton and the Bucks. It depends on the next series matchup for me. So, mm -hmm. yeah, actually, no, not even for this particular way, uh, not for this particular, the conference semifinals, if the Suns move forward, I will still be okay if Devin Booker came back a little bit later in that series because either they're going to either play the um, – if they play the Jazz, <laughs> rest well. Devin, get yes, yourself together. Yes. Get yourself together for um, the uh, conference finals because that's when we're going to really need you. If they happen to play the Dallas Mavericks and Luka is on the court, then I would say, okay, now let's consider when should we bring them back. It's really mm – -hmm. at this point, is I'm quite sure – the Phoenix organization is saying, okay, when should we really bring him back? Let's talk about this chess move we need to make. That's really what <laughs> right. it's about. That's really what it's about. We know he's injured, but do we need him back sooner than later? Can we push him later depending on who the matchup is? I think they would want him to be fully recovered as much as possible, especially with a hamstring, for him to really be geared up and ready for the conference finals if they make it that far because that's when he will really be needed against whoever team they match up against, whether it be the Phoenix, uh, whether it be the Golden State Warriors or the Memphis Grizzlies. Mm -hmm. That's kind of yep. how I see it going. So yeah. 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 One thing about the Phoenix Suns now, I don't think they need one particular person to step up and fill Devin Booker's 26 points, five rebounds, or four assists. I think they can all do it by committee. We saw last season where campaign stepped in. Mikel Bridges can get you, you know, he can get you at least 20 points sometimes. I, I really like the way that they, that they are constructed. And with Devin Booker out right now, I don't think that they missed a beat quite yet. No, no. They've played without him already this mm -hmm. regular season. So them playing without him for the next few playoff games, I don't think it's going to be that big of adjustment. However, I do recognize that regular season games and playoff games are two different types of games. I understand that. But I think that they can forego having Devin Booker on the court because, as you mentioned, they can get those that production by committee, right? he will eventually need to come back. That far. Yeah. Can we talk about Chris Paul and how fantastic he's been at 37 years old? They always like to throw the age out there. Chris Paul has been playing just, oh my God, just so dominant. Yeah. Especially yeah. in the fourth quarter, he's been their closer, especially yeah. with Devin out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So when we're talking about who else can do it, it's pretty much, it can be anybody, yeah. right? And that's what's so great. That's why it's important that you build a roster that can withstand injuries. And I think a couple of teams, in, a couple of organizations in this uh, league so far have done that. And I would have to say it's probably the Phoenix Suns is one of them. The Memphis Grizzlies is another yeah. one where yeah. their star players or one of their star player is out. You know, and I know, I don't know where people fare with uh, Chris Middleton. I think he's a star. He may not be a superstar, but he's a star on the on the uh, mm -hmm. Milwaukee Bucks. Mm -hmm. When your team can move forward without that, then your roster um, is, is a successful roster, I believe. And so I think they've done that. So We'll see how the Phoenix Suns move forward. But I think Devin Booker, we need him. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when is going to be dependent on the matchups. Exactly. Okay, so let's talk about a more recent injury. Um, Fred Van Fleet recently went out with, I think, a hip pointer, mm -hmm. and he's been struggling with his knee as well on, on his other leg. Oh, man, the Raptors, they were able to pull out that win against the Philadelphia 76ers, but in order to really make this a series, they need Fred Van Fleet. Yeah, they do need Fred Van Fleet, and because the Raptors have dug themselves in a hole already this season, this series, it makes it really critical that he's out there. And so, you know, I struggle with knowing if they can win, you know, win the series. So we'll see. Yeah. But, you know, Fred has not been shooting well. His three ball has not been has not been dropping. I don't know what's going on with that. It could be because he was so focused on his injury and the pain mm -hmm. management regarding that. Mm -hmm. But on the other side of the table is Joel Embiid and his thumb ligament damage i'm telling you now the game that the sixers lost against the raptors joel and b kept fiddling and fumbling with that thumb i think it's going to be a problem going forward this is only the first round and it only gets tougher yeah, from here yeah 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 i agree who do they play next they will have to play i want to say miami <laughs> oh Wait. yes Ooh. Yes, because it will not be the Hawks. Yes, it's Miami. Yeah, yeah. You think Bam Adebayo is not going to give Joel Embiid fits with a strained thumb ligament? 
You think Jimmy Butler care? <laughs> exactly. Not. Yeah, that's. But unfortunately, they can't even sit Joel and Bead out because if Joel and no. Bleed doesn't play, the Sixers can forget about it. Unlike yeah. teams like the Phoenix Suns, Memphis Grizzlies, Milwaukee Bucks, if somebody sits out, you're like, we can probably manage a couple of more games. That's not the case with the 76ers. And so they're so tight, you know, and the success of the 76ers is going is resting on Joel and B. Exactly. And there's so much pressure right now on James Harden and Doc Rivers to get out of the first round, seeming as though they were up three to zero. And that's the magic number for the Sixers, right? They that's cannot magic number for lose Doc. a series. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they, they cannot lose a series. They cannot. I don't want that narrative for the Sixers because, oh, that is not going to be good. No, they can't lose a series. <laughs> they really can't. So we'll see. All right, you guys, we're going to wrap up this episode. Make sure you drop down in the comments. Let us know what you think about this. And we will see you guys on the next one. But until then, peace. Peace out.